Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I've been having some technical difficulties, so hopefully my mic's working. We'll see if it sounds like crap. My bad, but hopefully it's good. Uh, so this video is gonna be talking about largely the Toyota Tacoma, my 2016 Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road. We're gonna be skipping around, we're gonna be rambling a little bit, kind of. Uh, so I'm gonna be putting chapters down here. Some of those, some people don't know how to use those chapters. They're just down here, the little timestamp bars kind of sectioned up into little sections. You can tap down there and it'll like open up a little thing and then you can skip around. I've been doing that in videos because some of my videos lately have been really long. And it's a long video and you may only care about some stuff. So I'm gonna break it up into chapters, so skip around. Uh, there's been a lot going on in my life. I've been super, 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 super busy. I basically live a life. This is like a little bit of updates. A little bit of updates. That'll be in the chapters. You can skip ahead if you don't care. Um, but been busy. I've been Overland Expo, so I've been get, trying to get this truck buttoned up. Been doing some stuff to the Tundra, actually, which I'll give you a little glimpse at. We got a new CBI front bumper on it and some lights and stuff. And been busy with house stuff. House building foundations gonna start uh they're coming out foundation crews are coming out to start doing the forms i think on monday of next week so like a handful of days from now so i've been trying to get a bunch of stuff buttoned up on the house and yeah my life has been busy been doing too much traveling honestly and not enough adventuring uh so the season of modifying and updating vehicles is hopefully coming to an end and i'll just have everything good and then my free time will be spent adventuring instead of modifying vehicles. Cause I hate, I hate working on vehicles. I don't really like it. I like taking vehicles out into the mountains and having fun. So I've been putting in a lot of time to update vehicles and I like that too. I, you know, I like making things cool, but hopefully we'll be having fun with them. So real quick though, I wanted to ask some favors of you guys. Uh, one is to, I always ask you guys to leave comments down below because I want to know what you like to see. I want to know what aspects of the channel interest you, what aspects of the channel don't. I can gauge some of this based on the views that the videos get and I can try to do stuff that you guys like. Actually, I mean, not really. I do whatever I want. I do whatever I find fun, but I decide to turn on a camera or flip it on or record certain aspects that I think you guys would be more interested in. So I'm gonna do whatever I want but I may spend more effort filming the stuff that you guys are interested in. So I always love to hear down below. I'm planning to, I've talked about it a little bit in videos, but my videos are so all over the place. I basically do everything that you shouldn't do on YouTube, which is why my channel is like really random and doesn't do as well as it could because I'm all over the place, like in this video. But I'm gonna be doing some videos on House building, I'm thinking about doing just like an intro to the build. So intro to the homestead, talk about the property, why I chose it, kind of the design process thus far, the snags I've hit, uh, the lessons that I've learned before I've even broken ground, uh, kind of the things that I think about when taking on the build and just a lot of big, like a lot of bigger picture stuff. I'm, I kind of want to do a video like that to kind of intro the building a homestead series because I think building the homestead series will be a new series on the channel. Sorry, little burpee. That's basically like my weekender lander series. So my channel is all over the place. Again, like prepping stuff, truck stuff, mods, updates, and weekender lander is like has a little place on the channel. And those are my kind of weekend overland adventure videos. I think I'm going to make a new series called like building the homestead and that'll be episodic as well. And I don't know, just let me know your thoughts on that when you have a second, because I'm curious. So, a couple other quick updates. Overland Expo was a blast down in Flagstaff. Uh, this year was a little bit different. I kind of posted up some times that I was gonna be at certain locations, like the KC Highlights booth or the Diamondback booth, or hanging out with my friends at Vertex at the Fieldcraft booth. And this changed Overland Expo for me. A lot of times I just cruise around on my one wheel or my, my Fazari and just like check out things, visit people, see industry friends and stuff like that. This year I spent a lot of time just talking to you guys, uh, people that watch my channel and are fans of the channel or whatever, and just kind of chatting with you and hearing about your, your truck mods or your, your adventures into preparedness. At Overland Expo, obviously, a large portion of people there are into overlanding type stuff. But still, it was cool, a lot of 
uh, holster customers there. We're talking, we talked guns or concealed carry or preparedness or homesteading stuff. So this year, I spent a lot of time talking to you guys, which I don't normally do as much. It's always definitely an aspect, but this time I talked to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you, and it was awesome. I loved it. So if you if you stopped by and chatted with me, sweet, took a picture, whatever, that was awesome. Uh, I really liked that. So I'm going to be at Overland Expo Mountain West. That's in Colorado at the end of August, I believe. And I'll probably do, be doing a similar thing, kind of post it up in some booths. I think we're going to try and get a bunch of food. And I'm just going to like cook food all day, not like a chef or maybe someone else will man the, the Traeger or whatever we have out there. But I'm just going to cook a bunch of food for everyone. So you can just come and grab a bite to eat and I'll be eating all day because I love to eat. Uh, so that uh, I'm going to be an outdoor retailer. I actually have the poop cruiser. My brown land cruiser is going to be in the Dometic booth at outdoor retailer. That's in Denver in June, mid June. I forget exactly early mid June. So if you're going to be out of that, let me know. I'll be hanging out at the Dometic booth some of the time and my land cruiser will be there the whole time. And I may, I may, I'm talking to Diamondback. I may make it out to Overland Expo Pacific Northwest in July. I think. So basically a lot of travel and I'm going to be building a house for the next six to nine months. This is, this is, man, this is six minutes of, of life updates or five minutes maybe. So I apologize. I just want to ramble. I feel like I should just do a life update video soon as well. Let me know your thoughts. Comment. A lot, lot of, I hope to read a lot of comments in this video. Cool. So we'll talk real quick. I'll show you a quick update on the Tundra and then we'll get into the Tacoma. All right. So real quick update on the Tundra. We have the lower Yakima bars. This is actually the new eye camper X cover 2.0 the full-size one So the other advantage of having the 6.5 foot bed Put a nice big tent on there and doesn't overhang really the Tacoma is my main uh, Gonna be my main off-road adventure rig the Tundra is more daily driver kind of work truck But I said you guys didn't catch it. I don't think I said from the very beginning I'm gonna build it out though, but I'm not gonna be using it for adventure So the Tacoma is basically I'm gonna keep like this all the time so tent gear everything so that way when i just have a quick second to go out and camp with the with the boys or take ashley on a little trip i just turn that thing on take it out to the woods the tundra is not going to be set up with a tent on it all the time We're using it for work and whatnot but occasionally i'll put a tent on it so the first aspect kind of of the of the portion that people are like oh i thought you weren't going to build it out is the cbi bumper now this thing is kind of weird. It doesn't photograph or video video that well. It's kind of looks a little looks a little funky in photos or videos. But let me, I promise you, in real life it looks really good. So this is like prototype bumper, and it didn't come with instructions. So I installed it uh, myself with a little help from a couple of people at Running for Tacos. Thanks guys, Leroy and the Twans. Uh, so I cut this. Probably a little bit too high. Again, prototype bumper, no real instructions. That could be cut down a little lower probably, but it's no, no big deal. And all the sensors and everything, but I'll do an update on this later. Uh, there's a few options. Some people kind of don't like that it follows the lines. Uh, CBI does a good job of following factory lines on the vehicles. So this keeps the grill pretty big. Some other bumpers out there uh, cut it off a little bit and make the grill a little bit smaller. So it's kind of a, a design choice to follow the lines or kind of do your own thing. CBI usually follows the lines. And again, I think it looks great in person. I got another set of prototype things here. So this is the DOT, uh, I think D DOT. I'm not sure what exactly what they're calling it, but basically the KC Highlights Flex Air 3s, this is the normal one. This is the combo beam. This is the special pattern one that basically has a really sharp cutoff. So you can use these as driving fogs on the highways. Amazing light. This thing, I don't know when it's out, maybe it's coming out soon, but the black background and the lenses just make it look super cool. It has a cool mode, so you can basically, it has two inputs, so you can have it for your, uh, basically your DOT fog light, and then you can also send it a separate signal to go full blast and turn this baby on, which turns it into a more standard full brightness SAE uh, or the cutout dot. So that's a really cool light. Uh, so that'll be out soon, kind of testing it out, and yeah. So there's the Tundra. I'm going to get this out of the way. 
do some updates on it later and get into the taco. All right, Tacoma version 457 of this 2016 TRD off-road. Love this truck, still love this truck actually. Things I don't love about it, the transmission. Things I love about it, almost everything else now. Uh, so summer is almost upon us in Colorado, which means all the really, really awesome good trails are gonna be opened back up. Uh, because there's a lot of snow in this state, obviously, once you get to high elevation where all the good stuff is, and you cannot take, you cannot go, you cannot make it through those places without like snowmobiles and stuff. So uh, weekender landers in the beautiful Colorado Rockies are gonna be back into full effect here. And it's a little warmer, so I actually like to go out. So you'll be seeing a lot of this truck, maybe occasionally the Tundra, and actually, we're about to take a family trip with the old Jayco Terrain, the Sprinter 4x4, down to Zion in a week or two. So you'll be seeing all kinds of adventure content. So Tacoma, this is the same tan Tacoma. It's been on the channel forever, and it's been seen a lot of facelifts and a lot of updates. So this is the current, current version. And I'm just gonna kind of walk you through. So the Tacoma, I have a link on my website, llod.us slash taco. Uh, and that always has like a current build update. So I'll link to basically everything on the build there at all times. And then I have a bunch of videos kind of outlining the modifications and changes. We'll just start up here in the front. So I had this old Bay Area Metal Fab grill that I got back in 2016 probably that they quit making. And that thing was made out of steel and it was like 20 pounds. And I liked it because it was cool and unique and they quit making it. Uh, but I decided to shed a few pounds and go with... All right, so this is the Run of Tacos Grill. I'll link all this down below. I do have a coupon code. With Tuan, Tuan hooked me up with a coupon code for you guys. <laughs> LLOD. Save some money. Gets kind of, uh, it gives you a different discount based on the product, but I think it's probably 10% off of the grill here. But basically they can paint these for you or you can order them like color matched to some factory paints or I actually have some letters coming that were matched basically to my wrap. So we're gonna put in the blacks for now and then he also sells a kit for little lights that go in here. So normally I think there's four lights. Three or four. Three or four and then I'm gonna try and put in like I don't know seven. Right seven or eight, I think. <laughs> I'm basically, and he sells a plug and play grill light kit. So super easy to get kind of the Raptor lights if you're going for that. I was kind of anti, I was anti pro grill for a while and I was anti Raptor light for a while. So this is a big change from uh, kind of historically what I've been into, but I decided to get over myself. Uh, I always liked the look. I just didn't, I didn't like doing it because I was like, oh, everyone else is doing it. I don't want to do it. I want to be cool. I want to be punk rock and different. But I've always liked it. So I decided just to uh, do it. These just pop in, plug and play, super easy to uh, customize. Um, I think they have a couple colors, amber, white. I, I, I'm not actually sure. I went with the amber, and instead of a three or a four kit, Tuan was like, you want three or four? I was like, all of them. So <laughs> we did a seven light kit. And so that goes in every spot here. And the reason is I also swapped my headlights to more motos uh, because they got this amber guy. So this amber ring, the DRLs are amber and it's sequential. I'll show a little bit of comparison here in a second compared to the Alpha Rex that I had on previously. But basically this line, I wanted to just extend over all the way to here in a sense. So I don't know if it really comes off that way, but that was my intention. I wanted to try it out. And I think it looks amazing. I love seven lights all day, or er, day. Uh, and the Morimoto's here. I have them in parking light mode, which is actually less bright than the DRL mode uh, because it's dark enough outside, you can't really tell, but it's dark enough that the headlights are kicking on. So I decided just to put the parking lights on, but just know that the DRL is even brighter than this. The DRLs on these are just like, uh, I love, I love a bright DRL and I love an amber DRL. So if you want a super bright amber DRL, these Morimoto's, are really good. They have a triple projector versus the quad projector of the Alpha Rex, but 
slightly brighter than the Alpha Rex. Really good cutoff. So here we go. Kind of hard to tell in a video, probably. But these are the Alpha Rex, and then these are the Morimoto's. Looks good. There are four projectors in these ones. The Morimoto's DRLs. And then three projectors. It's kind of comparing apples to oranges a little bit. They're both very bright DRLs. Twan says, Twan's had them both, says the Morimoto's are brighter. So that's really what I'm looking for, is a brighter beam. He says, nothing too crazy, because the Alpha Rexes are actually really good headlights as well. But I want maximum power. So let's see if we can get that on camera. All right, so here we are with the low beams on right now. Again, Morimoto on the right, Alpha Rex on the left. My headlights are aimed a little too high right now. But you can tell on the right, Alpha Rex, on the left, Morimoto. Both really good, nice and bright, good cutoffs. Uh, it's, I don't know if you can tell on camera. I can tell here that the left, the Morimoto is a little bit brighter than the Alpha Rexes on the right. So a little bit brighter. Uh, we'll kick on the high beams here in a second to show you as well. Um, but this is how it looks when they're on with the little kind of DRL outline with the headlights on the inside. So let me kick on the high beams here. So here's the high beams on both. Uh, again, my Alpha Rex are aimed a little higher, but the Alpha Rex high beam might be a little bigger. Seems to be taller anyway than the Morimoto's. Morimoto high beam seems to be a little more uh, bright, but doesn't go quite as high, if that makes sense. And then here's a quick comparison of the turn signals. They're both sequential. Uh, the Alpha Rex is sequential no matter what. You have the option with the Morimoto's. They're both amber. It's kind of weird that the Alpha Rexes look a little more white. They're both pretty similar in color, but the Morimoto's you can tell are like twice as bright. So I like bright turn signals. I want people to see me when I'm turning, so. It's nice. Uh, Morimoto makes high quality lights, obviously. And so we swapped them. And the interior is, as you can see, kind of all blacked out. Under there, the signals are sequential uh, by default, or you could make them not sequential if you're not a fan of that sequential life. So I think this combo up front oh, just looks Delicious. I have amber uh, KC G4 fogs and the old amber KC Flex Era light bar, a Warren winch, obviously, and a Factor 55 Ultra Hook. So that's kind of the setup. That's all in a CBI aluminum front bumpy. So that's uh, that's the front setup. Uh, this is a Cascadia 4x4 solar panel on the hood. Uh, but that's not new. We're trying to kind of only do new stuff in this video, I think. So while we're on lights, we also got some Morimoto. So these are a Miso Customs Morimoto collab tail lights. So these are, it's hard to show on camera how cool they actually look. But these are sequential as well. I'll uh, turn them on. And these are have a really bright reverse light in here and just, I don't know, they just look good. They're very bright, the turn signals are very bright, they work well, uh, and I, these are custom. So Miso made these custom for me. He had a couple sets that didn't have the lenses on yet, and he was like, you want me to like do something up custom for you? And I was like, definitely. So he got this, I don't even know if he got it like hydro dipped or painted or whatnot. He kind of handled all that, I appreciate it. But this is normally just like a matte black in here, which I think looks really good, honestly. Like matte black, uh, maybe, maybe I'd opt for over this, but I had a chance for customization. So I said, yeah, let's do it. You can see the old battle scar of what broke my previous taillights here. So I haven't fixed fixed that dent and scratch, but I did fix the taillights finally. After six months of cyberbullying from you guys telling me to fix them, I swapped them out for these just beautiful, beautiful 
Miso Customs Morimoto collab. Um, just plug and play. The tail lights are super easy. You don't need to swap for like upgraded LED reverse lights or anything. It is all just in there. Uh, awesome, 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 awesome. Cool little custom touches. I don't know if you can tell, but the LOD and actually Miso as well is engraved into that little side marker. Let me kick on the flashers for you. And then here's the tail lights difference. So here's my one that broke. It's been broken for a long time. This is Twan's truck. This is kind of the standard kit and it's cool because you can kind of from the side there's like some depth to this. Kind of Tron like. This has similar aesthetic but just with one and it's just kind of that solid color all the way through. Whereas this is kind of has a little more visual interest. So this is the turn signal, sequential, very cool. Tuan's helping me out here, thanks Tuan. So one of the things I didn't like about these ones is the blinker is actually really faint. Uh, sorry, the reverse, we did kick on the reverse lights for both these. I don't know if you can tell, but the more motors are definitely brighter over here. And I actually upgraded my reverse lights in these ones, but basically the turn signal, super weak. This turn signal, obviously very strong. And uh, these ones from the side actually, you basically can't see it at all. So you can see it on the mirror, when you're on the side, eh, not very good. These ones, super good. And kind of hard to tell in video, but the blinker is amber, not red. Uh, lighting's a little, color balance is a little weird here. But these ones, big upgrade kind of in every regard. Uh, as far as the general look of the base tail light, that's questionable. I do think that shape is pretty cool, but I do like the triple depth of these ones here. So quick comparison. So here's the sequentials of the turn signals. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's so bright. I just love the brightness. I want to be seen. If I'm using turn signals, I want to be seen. If I'm using flashes, I want to be seen. Uh, so I want those as bright as possible. And the uh, Morimoto's are super bright. These are actually another Miso side light. And actually he just released these puddle lights that I want to get. I don't have them yet, but planning to get them. And the sequentials on the rear, kind of hard to tell in the video as well, but the, the running lights and the brake lights are red. The sequential turns are amber as well. And you can tell, nice, nice and visible, beautiful. Beautiful, man, I'm just like really happy with the lighting upgrades I've done here. And then another big update that really changes the look of the truck, maybe <laughs> maybe more than anything, honestly, is MTs. Uh, I'm always, I've always been an AT guy, an all-terrain guy. Ran the BFG KO2s for a number of years. More recently have been really loving the Toyo AT3s. Uh, had them on my LX570 and actually been running them on Ashley's Rav for a long time. That was kind of, Got them on that when they just came out to kind of test them out. Toyo sent me out a set. They, Toyo sent me all these. Uh, so thanks for the support, Toyo. But they sent me those back in the day to test out, see how they were in Colorado and everything. So big fan of the AT3s, been running them for a while. Uh, but since again, this truck's kind of just a dedicated uh, weekender lander truck now, I was like, might as well go for the MTs. Uh, I do prefer still ATs on a daily driver, a vehicle you're gonna drive every day. Uh, or is kind of your main vehicle. So people have asked me through the years, A tier, MT, still big all-terrain guy, but can't beat M the look of MTs obviously. And for a dedicated kind of off-road rig, the MTs are just, you know, can't be beat. So the Toyo MTs have always been my favorite looking mud terrain tire. I just thought they were incredible. And I've had a lot of friends that have run them uh, and said really, really good things. This is actually my first ever set of Toyo MTs. So I'll let you know how they do, uh, but they freaking look good, that's for sure. So these are 35 by 1250 Toyo Open Country 
MTs. So with the new tires, I did go for some new wheels as well. So again, uh, depending on where you live or if it's a daily driver, I usually don't recommend bead locks, honestly. But again, dedicated trail rig, I decided to go for MTs and bead locks. So these are the RR6Hs, H stands for hybrid, which is really cool because you can run these with or without a bead lock or you can add protection rings, or I don't even know, the beadlock rings definitely look cooler than the protection rings. I would guess you could run the beadlock rings as protection rings, but not run them beadlock. So beadlock, basically the bead of the tire is locked into here, so in between this ring and that part. So you can't blow a bead. So I wanted to do that because uh, snow is part of my life and you want to air down really, really low in the snow when you can, but it's easier to blow a bead. So now I have bead locks uh, and MTs. So now probably all I need in this thing is a front locker and it'll do decently well in the snow, but I kind of hate snow wheeling most of the time. And then behind there now you can see these beautiful bling bling power brake. Uh, so big brake kit. So these have been incredible. The power brake brakes back there. I've talked about them in some previous videos. Uh, update, thoughts, amazing. Uh, so for a lot of the mountain pass uh, road driving and stuff, honestly, I do. Truck's pretty heavy, obviously, pretty weighed down. So having a big, juicy brake kit uh, is confidence inspiring, but just brakes really well, feels well, and will... Uh, not have brake fade as easily as as the standard brakes and then sometimes I'm doing some sketchy trails in Colorado up in the mountains and doing a lot of braking or whatever when I can't do everything through engine compression because this is an auto uh, having brakes that you can just rely on that will just stop you when you need to ah it's it's good I like it so I've been very happy with the power brake upgrade but again not going to talk too much about it because I talked that in the previous video and we're just doing updates in this video. So I also put these new valve stems in. So these are from Apex Performance, I think. I don't really know anything about them or the company. I, I hit them up uh, to ask some questions and then I replied. So I don't know much about them other than you basically pull this off. I'm not gonna do it right now because I'm lazy, but you unscrew this and you see this little lever here. You pull that and it's like an ultra quick air down so you pull that and it goes and you can air down super fast i think i don't know i'll have to test it again i just put all this in so i haven't even i haven't even aired down with this setup yet so i'll need to get a little timer out and uh, a um, tire gauge to kind of get some baseline times to go from you know 35 down to 15 or whatever i end up wanting to go to then uh, but basically just this super fast air down capability out of these things. So that's a new thing I got, I wanted to try out. The other major thing is I'm back to a Prinsu roof rack here. So this is a lot of people have been asking me because I started with a Prinsu. Prinsu was the first rack I got and I got it because at the time I was just in a seven foot garage and it was like barely, the Prinsu was like one of the most low profile, if not the most low profile rack on the market. And so I bought it and I loved it. Absolutely loved the Prince U rack, still do obviously. And then I wanted to try the front runner rack out for a while. So this is probably more info than I should share. I want to try the front runner rack. So I got the front runner rack and partnered with them for a bit. Great company, still love the guys, love the people over there, love the rack, love the whole accessory lineup. Um, but wanted to change back to Prince U because for those that don't know, CBI, and Prinsu are the same company. And been working with CBI forever. This is the original bumper that I put on the Tacoma. And I wanted to do some more things with them because I like them as a company and they're doing a bunch of stuff for the Tundra. So it made sense to me to move back to the Prinsu because obviously it's a rack that I love, but also this is a truck now that's like full CBI and Prinsu. So it's just, it's good for uh, my partners. Uh, CBI and Prinsu are sponsors of the channel. So yeah, a bunch of things came together. But I love, I've always loved the Prince U rack. I've loved how low profile it is, how modular it is. Uh, I did a Prince U review video a long time ago and not a whole lot has changed, but uh, basically some quick, quickie things that I like about it. 
you can choose where the crossbars go. So right now you can see I have full moonroof access with the Prince U system. That's important to some people and I'm one of those people that I like that. And more importantly, Ashley likes that and Isabella likes that. So having the moonroof open is one very cool aspect. The other is that how it's just super, super low profile. And it's also super, super lightweight. So I'm using like two or three fewer crossbars than they send, but it's really all I need. Um, and then when I decide to put some stuff up here, whether it be Pelican cases or solar panels or whatever, I can adjust these bars and put them exactly where I need to, to line up with whatever. And so I moved back to the Ram mount setup that I have on the WeBoost antenna. Uh, nice little setup. I got some KC C2 scene lights, kind of side lights. And this is the really unique thing. So as I'm working with brands, I like to prototype products and, and try new things with stuff. So I had a KC highlights. Uh, they're a build partner of mine as well. Awesome brand, love them, they're family. And I had a Pro 6 light bar on here before. And when I was swapping the rack, I was like, let's try something new with the lights. So Prince, who actually made me a custom wind fairing cutout for this bar of Flex Air 3s and a little mounting bracket for them as well. So thanks to Prince Hu for uh, modeling that up and creating that for me. And then KC Highlights kind of made me a custom one-off um, harness that I need to kind of clean up a little bit. So basically all of these are now powered off of one switch and I have some combos on the outside and then some spots in the middle. And I have the combos angled out a little bit, kind of hard to tell, but this gives me a whole just basically the sun. This is brighter than the equivalent Pro 6 light bar. Pulls a little more power as well, but this is an insane light bar if you want it. Uh, so obviously has a, has a pretty unique look that custom wind fairing allows me to cut it down and become a little bit more profile than putting pods on top typically is. And the output is just redonk donk, redonkulous. And all of them have amber backlights. Let me kick them on for you real quick. So here we are with the amber backlighting. It's kind of hard to tell on video, auto exposure, adjusting and, and what, but these are really bright right now. It's actually, they're brighter. You can kind of tell in the outer two looks brighter because it has the combo shield on there. So this shield kind of diffuses that amber light a little more than the spot pattern does. So I, I, like, I like the extra brightness in there, but again, it's kind of adjusting uh, auto exposure with the light. So in real life, it's pretty bright there. You can kind of tell, you see how bright these are and the lights, they're pretty bright. So it's kind of a cool, when I want to go full amber mode, I can kick on those backlights. And then when I want to blind the world, I can kick on the top lights there. So sweet, sweet, sweet update up there. So one other thing that we actually did last time in the last video was Running for Tacos sells a little kit that allows you to hook up rock lights, or I'm guessing you can use it for other stuff, but the main use is for rock lights that uh, works with your factory Toyota Jellyfish launcher switch. Uh, so this is a factory switch from Toyota that basically just controls your lighting uh, of your rear light here. So really, really that light. Your brake light has an LED light built in that can turn on the bed light basically uh, when you open your door so you can factory have it on door, have it off, or you can flip it on at all times. And the kind of nice thing is when you flip it on, it's on a timer, I don't know exactly how long it lasts, maybe an hour, but it won't run too long. And maybe that's a pro or a con. I think of it as a pro because a lot of times I'll, I'll, I don't want that on forever by accident. But this is wired to rock lights here. So I have used the KC Cyclone V2 rock lights. Don't worry, I'm wiring up some other stuff right now that I haven't finished running the actual wires to, but these are the Cyclone lights. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. Auto exposure. So as you can probably tell, 
these are like the brightest rock lights on the market. They're kind of the undisputed champs in the rock light space right now. Have been for a while. They recently got upgraded to be even brighter. Great rock lights. This is on a magnetic mount that I'm using. It is so strong on there, but KC sells this little magnetic mount kit. So you can kind of easily put that where you want it. So I have those kind of pointing out like that. So they provide a ton, a ton of illumination. Probably too much because they almost, if you're down low, they're really shining right at you. We did install it in the, in the kind of standard spot here. I do think, personally, I think this is about the dumbest spot for a rock light. But we just did it because it's kind of, it's kind of the standard. Normally I would put one there, one there. So basically in front of and behind both tires and then one here. But I did things a little bit differently here. And this is another magnetic mount. So this is right in the center. So that'll illuminate this whole area over there. Same on the sides, in the wheel wells. And then one more that we just put right into the skid plate. This is kind of tucked up under there. It's a spot where you really, you're never gonna hit that particular spot. I mean, you technically could, but you're never gonna hit that particular spot. So that's kind of shining out the front. So quick rock light update as well. And then coming inside, we have the upgraded Miso dome lights in the front and the back here. So this has been an awesome upgrade. For me, it has red or white. You can choose. The white is super, super bright. And they just look good. So I have this in the front and the back. We did install that last time, but I figured I'd mention it real quick. So the big, big upgrade, one of the best upgrades that I've done to this truck so far, this is a 2016, so it didn't come with CarPlay. And I asked in a previous video, like, hey, what are your thoughts on getting CarPlay, blah, blah, blah. And basically it was an aftermarket unit was really the only way. There's a way you can kind of do this hacky thing. It costs like five or 600 bucks. You put a new like computer module in it, hook it up, kind of bypasses the thing, and then you get CarPlay in your factory unit. It's a lot of money. It's kind of jank. It's kind of a hack. So I said, why don't we just upgrade it? So I was actually looking at this by chance, randomly, so this is from Stinger. This is a high 10. And I was looking at this to buy. And they were in the KC Highlights booth with me at Overland Expo. So they reached out and they're like, hey, we'd love to do like a live live demo install of this unit. Uh, would you be interested in one? I was like, hell yeah, boys. So they actually installed this right at um, Overland Expo. Stinger Off-Road did. Thank you guys for that. So this is a new unit to me. So basically I've had it since Overland Expo. So I use it for the trip home. CarPlay was amazing as you would as you would guess it is. So this is basically a 10 inch screen, runs Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and kind of has this install kit that kind of makes it look somewhat factory. It kind of looks like, you know, the screen in the Tundra and that 14 inch Tundra screen really got me spoiled. So uh, coming to the Tacoma with a little tiny screen made me feel like I was like going back in time to the 50s or something. So now we got a nice big 10 inch beautiful screen here uh, that lets me run CarPlay. So awesome, 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 awesome. Installed super straightforward. I watched them do some of it. And again, they just did that at Overland Expo in the booth. So uh, they, you don't have to cut any wires, harness, mounting kit, everything. And this unit actually is kind of cool because they use the same unit, the, basically the screen and the brain, uh, and sell different kits. So you can install the same unit in like a Wrangler. There's a, like a specific Wrangler kit, the Tacoma obviously, and probably a bunch of other vehicles I don't know about. But this is big, big upgrade. Sorry, you can kind of see some fingerprints on here. So I just actually left the little uh, s screen protector on here that it ships with because it's kind of like a little screen protector. I don't know if they have a matte one. I may look into if they have a matte screen protector because I always like matte screen protectors. So this basically has inputs for so many cameras. Uh, they were showing me their Tacoma's kind of hooked up, obviously, has uh, basically 360 cameras, has some cameras up there, front camera, back camera. Mine I have set up uh, to run my front and rear camera, basically. So front camera, rear camera, uh, through the unit, but they basically have hookups for all kinds of cameras that you could ever want, uh, left, right, rear, but 
I, I don't know how many cameras you're gonna up. I think like eight or something. And then it, obviously it runs CarPlay. Uh, so this one, I don't know, there may be a wire, wireless CarPlay hookup, but this is a wired CarPlay, and they just hooked that up to the USB port there. So just plug the phone in and have CarPlay. The only thing I kind of might need to figure out is we installed this uh, Runner for Tacos Kit Anytime camera, which allows you to view the front or rear camera anytime. And it was nice because you could just like hit that anytime you wanted to. So now this button still toggles the front or rear camera, but instead of toggling that right now, I do need to actually go to the cameras. So it's pretty easy to get there. Obviously you saw two buttons and then I can still use the front. I can use this toggle here to go to the front camera or the rear camera. So the switch still has a functionality. It's just now basically from, from CarPlay to get there, I do need to do two clicks. Not a big deal, super easy to get to, and mostly I use this front camera like out on the trail and stuff, so I'll have a moment to kind of click that around. But that's just one thing to note in case you were wondering. I'll let you know later if I figure out kind of an update or a fix to that, but don't have it yet. All right, so here we go with just quick CarPlay demo. I always just like GPS myself to New York, so it's not showing my uh, location. Uh, for everyone to see, if you're wondering. Not actually planning a road trip to New York. Uh, so, it's CarPlay. Big, nice, perfect landscape CarPlay. So it works great. It works great, you know, as you'd expect from CarPlay. Uh, the thing I like about this is uh, on some CarPlay units, you gotta like go here, you gotta like find your main menu thing and do all that. Uh, what I like about this one is there's just a home button. So at any time you're using CarPlay but you want to get back to some settings or whatever, you just hit the home button and you're back to your main settings. As you'd imagine, all kinds of settings in here. You can have Sirius, you can have an HDMI hookup, so you could plug in like a, a Roku or an Apple TV or a Fire Stick or whatever and actually use this as a display for that or regular AV. So you can kind of do a lot in this unit. You can change the background, you can change the colors, you can change you know brightness and everything that you'd expect, obviously, and also has a little volume control right here, which is a knob, beautiful, works with the steering wheel controls as well. So you have that, and then little microphone is right here, which I took a couple calls actually on the drive. They said I sounded great. So I like that because it's like you can kind of talk into it if you, if you really need to like get up close and talk into it. But I just like that you don't have to have like some stupid microphone thing up here that a lot of the aftermarket units have. So this, can I recommend it? Do I recommend it? Highly, highly recommend this. It's an expensive kit, uh, so be prepared for a little bit of sticker shock, but if you have the coin and you want a nice like big kind of OEM integrated look that just works really well, has a nice screen, sounds good, then this is certainly one looking into. So Stinger Off-Road, thanks for hooking it up. Uh, I had been wanting the CarPlay because I wanted to use some things like, because I wanted to use, you know, some more CarPlay stuff, obviously just for normal driving and whatnot, but uh, a lot of apps are kind of integrating into CarPlay as well. To include Onyx, which I talked about in a previous video, but I'm working much more closely with Onyx now on kind of beta testing some features, trying things out, so yeah having CarPlay to basically use the big screen for Onyx, super sick as well. Which, if you want to, try it out. I have a code, LOD, saves you like 10 or 20% off. More info down below. But yeah, this is, you know, probably one of the biggest, nicest upgrades. Uh, you still retain, you can use all your upgraded little components here, like the color matched rings. You can also use your little, I think this is an Expedition Essentials, I believe, rail, I forget. I might be wrong on that. This is something Tuan actually just put in for me and I didn't put in myself, but super easy install. But this screen still works with that so you can mount all your 67 design phone mounts or whatever. I actually need to get a slightly longer uh, arm to get this over a little bit more to the side, but this is still my favorite phone mount. Just works with any phone, super easy, 
one-handed operation. So love the 67 design stuff. And then you can put your RAM stuff, your, your Garmin inReach or whatever. I actually moved my, I told you guys I didn't like this big, the command center. I don't really like that, uh, all that stuff up there. So I'm gonna move my ham radio down somewhere a little more inconspicuous. I don't really know yet, but basically rerouted the wiring for this to put somewhere else. So that way I could just have a nice clean experience up here. And then I actually might not even use this phone mount much anymore because I had this up here because I didn't have CarPlay. So I was using my map and everything for CarPlay. So I was using my map and everything on my actual phone. But now, now, you know, if I wanted to clear that out, I could get a super clean kind of cabin. So I think, I think that covers most of the most recent updates to the Tacoma. And it kind of feels like, well, I don't ever feel this way, but people say you feel this way. Like when you get a, when you get a new haircut and you're like feeling all fresh, I just feel the same when I get a haircut, but it kind of feels like I would imagine that would feel or getting a new pair of shoes or whatever. Cause I kind of did get a new pair of shoes. So this best version of this Tacoma that it's ever been, honestly, like really, really, really loving the Tacoma right now. And it kind of, you know, like I, like I was alluding to, kind of makes it feel like a new truck in some ways. Now, if we could just get that transmission sorted. I do have tunes, I have 529s, but the transmission still sucks. Granted, I guess I am asking a lot of this little engine with the, the bigger tires and the, the full armor and everything, but that's the main thing. I just, I just wish it shifted a little better or a little less or had a little more power. There's always supercharging option, but I'm not, I don't think I'm ready to drop 10 grand on that. But current version of the Tacoma already just in time for all of the summer adventures that I'm gonna be taking it on in the mountains of Colorado. So I'm operating on very low energy levels, not enough sleep, still kind of recovering. You know, when that last video I was like sick, crazy, I still am kind of sick. But that's because I spent a few like long 12 hour driving days on like two hours of sleep and just haven't quite, haven't quite caught up. So hopefully, hopefully I'm fully recovered soon. But yeah, Tacoma, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I would love, I would love to read some comments down below on whatever, feedback on the Tacoma, videos that you wanna see, if you have questions on whatever aspects of my various builds, if you want me to do, well, I'm gonna do the Homestead series no matter what. So I kind of told myself, for those people that don't give a crap about being self-reliant and building a house and basically doing the coolest of the cool things, it's like my life goal kind of is to build this homestead. My life goal was to just have a beautiful property and be more self-reliant. I have this really great opportunity, luckily, that I've worked hard at for the last decade of my life to get to, but to buy land and build a house that I designed and I'm gonna be building the house. So it's kind of a, a dream opportunity that I've been working towards for a long time. Like building a truck is cool, yeah, whatever, but like building a house and a property, oh, that's end, that's end game for me. So I'm super stoked on it. So I don't even care what you guys say, I'm gonna make videos about it, but for those that don't care about that, I'm gonna to try to still make the one video a week that I would have normally made if I wasn't building a house. So all you guys are gonna get is more content and I'm gonna do my best for those that don't care about the homestead to keep the regular content that is always changing on this channel anyway, to kind of continue that tradition or that vibe for, for you guys. And then for those of you that are even cooler, we'll do the house stuff as well. So, sweet. Let me know questions, let me know thoughts, feedback, whatever. I was noticing my posture was really bad, so did a little bit of that. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching my weirdness, my weird antics on YouTube. Super busy summer coming up. Uh, in the earlier announcements, I, I kind of talked about what events and stuff I'll be at, so maybe I'll catch you there. Oh, also, one last little update. Some people asked like, if I was gonna vlog my wedding, or anything. nah, that's like kind of private life stuff, but I did upload some wedding photos. We finally got our wedding photos back. Uh, so I uploaded some of those on Instagram. So go check out my Instagram, at last line of defense, one word, 
and I'm usually shadow banned, so you have to type in like the whole thing or I won't pop up because I'm, I'm always shadow banned for some reason, I don't know. So type in the whole thing if you're not following me already. It's freaking not. And a few posts back by now, I don't know when I'll post this video, but probably a few posts back, you can see some wedding photos. Or you can follow Ash Venture 91 I don't actually know what her handle is, but maybe I'll put it here if I remember. Or she's tagged in that post, and she's probably going to post even more wedding photos than I did because, you know, it's what girls do. So, yeah. Okay, that's it. Rambling is out of control. Catch you guys later. Until next time, take care. Bonus content, guys. Bonus content. These stupid, ridiculous ugliest looking space slippers in the world. Ashley uh, bought a pair of these at like, I don't know, Marshalls or something. And I had seen them and I was like, man, those things look comfortable. And I couldn't fit into hers, but I just like squished them around and they're comfortable. These, I'll link some down below. Uh, they might replace Crocs for me. Like they are, they might even be like more ridiculous and ugly and nerdy than Crocs, but they're also more comfortable. And you can wear them with socks or without. So, yeah, sweet.